Hey, Dan here at Sweet Maria's. This is the first of a series of bullet roast profile videos that we're creating where we take turns choosing a coffee to roast in the bullet coffee roaster and um, talk a little bit about the coffee that we are roasting and our approach in the roaster. And then we'll share those roast results in a graph from uh, roast time, as well as a roast recipe that's downloadable in Roast World. I'm kicking things off with our Polar Espresso Holiday Blend, which is a um, limited edition blend we carry this time of year. And this year's version is made up of a wet process El Salvador coffee that's the base ingredient. It's a coffee that is um, super low toned in the middle roast range, um, very chocolatey, a big body, and has a pretty low acidity level too, which is nice for a classic toned chocolatey espresso. Accenting that base ingredient are two Western Ethiopian coffees from the Agar region. And both of them are wet process, but um, we found them to be a little bit more fruit forward than some of our other washed Ethiopian coffees. And both um, had really nice body as espresso. I've been enjoying this blend quite a bit, but I've only roasted it in my Quest uh, M3S's. And those roasters are a much smaller capacity than the Bullet. I tend to roast about 100 grams of coffee at a time, um, whereas I like to roast one full pound in the bullet. That's still only half the capacity that the bullet can uh, manage, but I like the control that I have um, with a pound of coffee. I feel like I'm able to um, implement changes to the roast profile uh, a little bit easier with uh, half the capacity. So I settled on a pound of coffee and I wanted to um, achieve a really nice full city roast. So right around 30 uh, degrees Fahrenheit past the beginning of first crack. And I hope to get this in under 14 minutes. My preheat temp is 401 Fahrenheit, but um, I am roasting back to back. And so my initial warm up batch is probably the only roast that sees a 401 degree drop temp. I think that most of the successive roasts after that, that are around 450 Fahrenheit because I like to cool and roast at the same time. I uh, kept the heat input to a medium level for the first half of the roast at P5 and kept the fan speed pretty low. Um, rate of rise was a steady 25 degrees for the first four minutes and once I started to see that dip, um, I started to push the heat up a little and also push the fan up at the same time, knowing that the chaff would start separating from the bean, and I wanted to pull that off on my roast batch. Um, around minute seven, you see uh, I'm at uh, P8, and my fan speeds at, at um, five, and the rate of rise starts to increase again. And around that time, I uh, pull back on heat a little bit at a time, uh, just to keep the rate of rise uh, going in an upward trajectory, but um, also not wanting first crack to get away from me. My first crack time happens uh, right around nine minutes, 393 Fahrenheit. And from there, I pretty much ride out the rest of the roast uh, where I started at P5, um, but with a higher fan speed of uh, six at first, and then I dropped it to five there in the last couple minutes. In terms of roast color, the, the roast is super even looking. Um, I'm not seeing a lot of um, inconsistent color variation, which is something you might see with like a dry process ingredient if it was thrown in there. Now this coffee is um, intended for espresso, which is how I've assessed it. And um, I'm really happy with the way the shots pull. They look beautiful, which I know um, visuals don't necessarily, aren't necessarily an indicator of cup quality. But uh, the shot just pulls beautifully. As you can see, it just looks super creamy. And it had just an amazing creamy mouthfeel, just this really lovely velvety texture to it, which really helps to highlight the chocolate flavors that um, are found in the espresso. Um, I'm getting semi-sweet chocolate chips and bean to bar, uh, high percentage cacao chocolate bar, and this really um, intense, bittering cocoa finish in the aftertaste. Um, I also get this uh, a slight ginger note in the aroma, and um, there's just a lovely 
citrus note that um, isn't overly intense and acidic, but adds this kind of glazed orange peel bittering note to the, the profile um, that just creates a real nice depth of flavor. This roast is gonna work really well as a brew too, especially for those who like uh, a lot of bitter sweetness in their cup. Um, I think I would probably opt for a full immersion method like French press or uh, maybe a clever coffee dripper, which will really uh, highlight the body that this coffee has to offer, as well as those uh, bittersweet low tones. To learn more about this particular roast profile or to download the roast recipe, uh, you can follow the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.